Uh, let me start by introducing myself. Uh, my, my name is Micheline Amar. I am so, so, so happy to be among you today. <laughs> and uh, we're starting off uh, the science group uh, strong. So uh, this year, we decided to use a different format just to, to, to test what works and what didn't work. For the people who weren't here last year, we had just picked a day, picked a time, and we went with it. And we only had two meetings, but it was very, very productive meetings. They were meetings about the 4059 and the 4060, which is the science, uh, the new uh, SEC3 sciences, right? So if you if you haven't had a chance to actually um, look at it, it's all recorded, it's, it's archived. Thanks to our, our wonderful, wonderful Richard Benchot, because without him, this would not be possible. <laughs> so I, I want to start off by thanking him so much for, for being here and being our pillar. Um, that being said, uh, that being said, um, so everything, it, just to let you know ahead of time that this would be recorded. So in, if you need to go back, review stuff, uh, invite other of your teachers, uh, you're more than welcome to, to, to do so. Okay. Uh, that being said, uh, if you if you take a look at the chat, uh, Richard uh, was kind enough to put today's agenda uh, for your uh, for your viewing. And, um, and I'm inviting you to start off with the attendance list. And also, if you want, you could take a look at the library resources, which we're going to go through. But before we start that, I would just like to have, uh, I would just like to uh, just do a round table for, for name, uh, just so uh, if you don't mind, so we could, uh, uh, and how would you like me to call you? It's not to put you on the spot, but just to have an idea uh, of, of who's here, please. So uh, I guess I'm going to start off with you, Sarah. Just, uh, uh, hello, I'm Sarah. I'm, teacher, I'm a science teacher, uh, four and five in uh, chemistry in, uh, in uh, CDC in the uh, cell of Wilf and Laurie. Thank you. Andy? <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi, everybody. My name is Andy Scheid. I'm a member of the Kipshuk, I'm helping out with the dossier of Native Education and Inuit in the Education in Math, starting a couple of days ago. Welcome, Andy. He's Thank a wonderful addition to our team. Uh, I guess Rachel. Okay, Giovanna. Hi, I'm Giovanna. I'm um, a RISI um, regional service and uh, I uh, offer center support. I'm out of the MSB and I'm happy to be here and meet you all. Uh, Richard is our pillar. Our wonderful X9 D A R F. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still trying to figure out how to work this thing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathleen Hackett. Uh, I'm from the New Frontier School Board. I work at HEC. I have not yet taught any of these science courses. We're individualized, but I'm trying to prepare for students that will come in eventually. So that's why I'm here. Perfect. Nice to see you. And our beautiful Barbara. Hi, everyone. My name is Barbara Chaquette. I'm evaluation consult consultant. I work for GRICS. I work with you to help create the exams. Thank you. And Gail? Hi, everyone. I'm Gail Gagno. I work at Lester B. Pearson School Board as one of the many pedagogical consultants, not a specialist in science. So I love attending these and learning, as I always have, from Michelin and the rest of you. Welcome, Gail. Sonia. Hi, everyone. I'm Sonia. I'm an educational consultant with Riverside School Board for both AGE and BT. Welcome, Sonia. Emily. Hello, I'm Emily Bowles. I am uh, Giovanna's wonderful counterpart. Or Giovanna is wonderful. I'm not her wonderful counterpart. <laughs> um, and so yeah, I'm part of the HC team, and today my or now my dossier is working on developing digital resources for teaching and learning. Awesome. Hi, I'm a, I'm Susan, and I'm a teacher at uh, Place Cartier. So I this year I'm uh, teaching science. I'm doing uh, 4060 right now, and I will be teaching 4061 and 4062 and 4059 another group anyway that's my plan for the year plus math so i'm doing a cst4 at the moment with another group 
so um, I'm, yeah, so far enjoying the, the new 4059, 4060. So I was scared and now it's, it's going well. <laughs> Just have to start, right? <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> At our feet, right? <laughs> and uh, André? So my name is André Fortin. I'm a consultant for Western Quebec. Welcome everybody. So um, we wanted to start off by again uh, just um, to introduce our 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 of course our services that is accessible uh, to the services accessible to everybody in the board uh, across the nine uh, school boards. Uh, which of course we we just met uh, Barbara, who's uh, who is actually Barbara. You want to describe a bit what you do? Evaluation, I guess. Hi, I work with teams of teachers and consultants to create the evaluation situations, the exams. Um, so it, you know that if you want to work on an exam, you have to submit it to Micheline, who submits it to the liaison committee, and then we can work on it together. Uh, Micheline and I just finished working on uh, two exams, the 4060 um, version B and the 4060 version C, which should be online soon. The secretary is doing the final, uh, uh, putting it uh, together. And yeah, I know it's been long <laughs> awaited for. So that's what I do. I work with you. So if there's a need, please, you can contact me directly or you can go through Micheline and uh, the liaison committee and we'll work hard at getting those exams out there. If you have any questions for me. We could send you an email, I assume. And and Barbara, really, really, I, I appreciate everything you do. And guys, you are on the field. And if you have any feedback whatsoever on any exam, please don't be shy. It's through feedbacks that we improve our exams. And if there's no feedback, we love getting stuck with exams that we don't like. But Anyways, <laughs> so if, if you have any feedback, what works, what doesn't work, uh, BIM does listen, Barbara, I'm 100% I'm, I'm uh, supportive and I know what Barbara does. So uh, thank you, Barbara. Now the AC team, again, uh, we welcome uh, Giovanna and Emily. So um, I guess uh, we could start off uh, with uh, Giovanna, what you offer our, our teachers. Well, essentially, um, uh, center support. Uh, so I work in conjunction with uh, usually the pet consultants. Uh, so if, if there is a need, uh, usually the teacher will contact the pet consultant who will then contact me to come up with uh, PD initiatives and or, um, you know, figure out like something that already there is a need in the center. So that's I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> we're all in it together. We're all in it together. That's it. We're, we're part of it. That's it. We work as a team. We're all in it together. Thank you, Joanna. Emily. Uh, yeah. So, like I mentioned before, my dossier involves the creation of digital resources for teaching and learning. Um, so, any sort of ideas that you might have for, oh, like in science, you know, in the biology course or physics, chem, whatever science course, we're like, it would be super cool if we had, you know, such and such a type of resource, you know, maybe some videos or an interactive textbook. I don't know, whatever type of cool thing you can imagine, a digital resource for teaching and learning that you or your students could benefit from. Um, I would love to work with you and with Michelin to help create that, bring that into the world to, to be something useful for you. So let me know. Thank you, Emily, for sure. And uh, we would like to um, well, compliment your service. I know Karen will be poking soon, but I'll introduce her for, 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 um, for all of us. Uh, Karen Jacques and Karen Martin, these are new services that this year, well, this year it's been around for a bit, but it's got extended to the English uh, sector. And we also have Avi Spectre. Um, these are complementary service in terms of if you have uh, students in difficulties, if we have uh, learning uh, challenges, these are, these are experts that could come that you could guys could consult to get uh, maybe ideas in place, um, some support in place to, to, to help you through. Um, and I, I'm not the expert in that. I mean, uh, Karen and, and I would probably be better at, at introducing it, but for sure, this is the ideas and hopefully they'll, um, well, I, I know uh, 
when when Karin comes back, I'll let her uh, talk about her mandate a bit more. Um, and finally, a keep shock. So I guess uh, Julie could uh, talk for us. Uh, so uh, our mandate, as far as uh, subject specific, um, is really to help the implementation of the new programs or the new subject matter that comes in and down the pipes. For example, there's a new history program coming up. There is also the biology that's also um, being uh, looked at currently. And anything that you have that is uh, curricular, curriculum related, you can, uh, you can reach us for it. And if we do not have uh, the answer for you, or if we need to re um, connect you with uh, people from the network, we will gladly do uh, do that for you. Absolutely no problem. Uh, if there's anything I should add, Michelin, specific dossiers are fine. We're all, we're all there, but do not hesitate. Reach yeah. out to us. Yeah. And, and just to, to, to add to what uh, Julie just said, we will be putting a working group together based on needs eventually. And, and that is like, for example, since the biology of SEC5 is coming up, other than building exams for it, there probably will be putting working work groups together, like teachers with that expertise in mind to build content also. So mm -hmm. we will get there yes. <laughs> once uh, we get more direct information from uh, the ministry on uh, what is uh, what is needed. But this is in the pipe also. Yes, and any après cours that is uh, subject specific that has not been done in the past year or has been done, uh, but not, let's say, um, reconduit. This year, we're really going to make sure that there is uh, as much as we can put in uh, our schedule and uh, a monthly occurrence would be, uh, would be our goal for this year. And, and just to let you know, ageresources.ca, uh, if you go and have a moment and take a look at it, you'll notice that all the social sciences, all the English uh, history tabs got just added with resources. And uh, we also had added uh, a video of explaining how to use the website. So you guys are more than welcome to explore. So there's new additions and you have access also to all of our um, newsletters, any updates, there's a reference section, uh, contact of all our partners, everybody here, you could have access to them. They're all there uh, to your disposition. So that, uh, just to start off the year, we have to just go over all of these resources and all the new edition of resources that's available to the network. And I wanna start off by also introducing Helen. Um, so I, I think I've met quite a few people now. Um, so I'm Helen Rodriguez. I'm from the uh, Riverside School Board on the South Shore. Uh, this, the last couple semesters, I've only been doing the physics because I'm on a loan of service to the union. But I've done every science course with the exception of the, uh, the 4063 and so the woodworking, but I did all the training for it. Thank you, Helen. And um, just to start off today, today we, we actually brainstormed a lot to say what we wanted to, 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 to bring to you today at the beginning of the year. And we felt that it would be necessary, like uh, Helen and I, we thought it would be a nice starting point to kind of talk about what kind of issues uh, you're facing, what kind of challenges, what works, what doesn't work. This is an, an area where teachers is a safe space for teachers to come. And, and share their concerns and, and their successes and to help each other because the network is so wide and sometimes it may feel lonely. You know, if, uh, if every, every teacher has its own reality, some teachers are by themselves in the center and, and they have no one to share things with and others, they're lucky enough to have partners that they could maybe throw ideas around with. So having this opportunity in an après cours to share like our concerns and not feel alone is is amazing. So this is uh, the starting point. And we came up with a few topic of concerns, which is actually uh, we're kind of inspired from real life, uh, real life uh, situation. Like, for example, um, if we may start off with the, the first topic of discussion, which we thought was relevant, is what specific topic do your students have trouble with? And notice over here, we started off with examples because these are examples of actually teachers voicing their examples. So we would like to see an open, like just an open discussion of what, what concern you can, you may add it directly in the document. Everybody has access to the document. You could write directly in it. And if not, 
we're taking note on, on concerns that you have, uh, that maybe this is areas of contents we could develop also later on, you know? So um, I know I know some of some of, of the examples that we, we had. Some students uh, had difficulty naming ionic compounds, so language is an issue in with a lot of our students. So that was an area of, of difficulties. Um, balancing equation that is a challenge. I actually met a few teachers, and that was a, a, a very like uh, a topic that seems to be reoccurring. Um, and uh, isolating variable, which seems to be the math, the basic math concept that you see uh, cross pollination with with science. So uh, please let's have a discussion of what you guys is there other subjects, other topics that you find your students are struggling with. The, the floor is all yours. So in terms of math, I 100% um, agree with the issue with isolating a variable that seems to be very problematic and I spend a lot of time on it. My class, I have the luxury of, uh, I have a lot of time with um, my groups. So I do pause and just over and over and over again, the same thing that seems to get everybody on board eventually. Um, yeah, there are a lot of math issues as, as we go along. And of course I'm blanking, um, but in um, science, when I've been, I've been teaching the 4060, they have to, there's a section on technical drawing. And I found that to be incredibly weak. Like the idea of drawing something in a 3D, like an oblique or an isometric um, drawing, they had never done that before. Like it was like starting from zero. So I ended up, I borrowed some uh, uh, Lego blocks from another teacher and we're building different shapes and then we're drawing them so they can see it in 3D, the top and the side and doing multi-view projections. So they're getting a lot better, but I was amazed by the um, lack of history and anything like that. Like, you know, when you're a kid, you, you draw and you do 3D. I don't know. They just never have, I guess. They didn't, some of them didn't even know how to play with Lego. So oh, that, was that was very interesting to me too. And that's just environmental you know, situations. Um, so, um, and I was thinking, Emily, when you were talking about, you know, tech, using tech in the class, like I, I'm sure there are things I can do online that I have not done, like uh, with, with technical drawing. I've been just kind of grabbing what I can and what people have shared with me and whatever. Um, but I'm sure there's some of that we could do uh, online. So that would be something I would very specifically like help with or uh, ideas for. Um, I'm sure I can look into that and we can uh, we can explore that. Me, you, okay. Michelin, and any other teachers who are game. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Well, uh, Susan, it's interesting. Uh, uh, it's interesting you're 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 mentioning technical drawing because uh, uh, another area that I found is super interesting is the link between the math of three and the science of three, because in math, in three, there is projection and oblique drawings. So this would be a super interesting, a super interesting area where these two topics may meet, right? Mm -hmm. So on, on the math side could be like the technical part and the science side is the context part. So maybe that's another thing you made me think of maybe having links between the point of doing math at that level, because it seems to be choppy sometimes. And, you know, and like why we're learning this here, it has no point, but maybe making it the link to the, the sciences that might be as something we could like mm -hmm. maybe uh, investigate between levels, right? Or topics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it made me also remember, um, they also have difficulty with scale factor, which is comes up in this science, but of course it's a big topic in, math in maybe the the three or i'm not sure which level but yeah. um yeah but is, but yeah okay mm -hmm. yeah but it's interesting, it's interesting you mentioned that the scale because scales also come back in four because you have the proportions and you have other yes. things yeah so if they don't understanding at three obviously they carry it to four and that's why mm -hmm. they have you have to kind of almost 
review all the same topics over and over because I don't think, I think maybe we should do the exercise of like linking the topics among levels and linking mm -hmm. them with the science. So like both dimension, maybe that could be a nice exercise to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I have ongoing, uh, ongoing enrollments, individualized math mixed with science curriculums. And also have a lot of students who are out of school for a long time. So I actually make the point of never assuming they remember anything. Because yeah. I have students who maybe uh, um, were in school like 10, 20 years ago, where yeah. what they learn is also very different back right then. Yes. So I always, even at grade 10, mass, they start with number line, just in case. Yeah. 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 And science, I am trying to do the same thing. And I find it very frustrating that I'm putting resources here and there and there and there. And putting together things, but I don't, I never have eat for neither math was, nor science, anything that are put together for me already so I can use. So I'm always finding my own resources. Yeah. To a point like missionary, you know, I, I'm finished making my math, one, five, one, four, five, two, four, and five, three, where I, the way I want them to work. I never assume anything. So review all the way back to the beginning on even how to draw a triangle, what these things are called, and uh, and but it takes tremendous amount of time, and I'm struggling to do the same thing for science. Yeah. Because I do have students who, who want to explore. Great, and that's great for, uh, for electricity right now. And also students who, if I put the battery and connectors in front of them, I have no idea what to do. Mm, yeah. 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 But but Jessica, this is this is interesting what you're saying because you're you're not the only one across the province who have that problem. I've been talking to lots and lots of teachers mm -hmm. who, like like you don't have the space of a lab. So they have usually a table in a corner in a classroom and that's their lab. And that's their lab for chemistry, that's their lab for science, that's their lab for, for physics, that's their lab for even technology. So um, based on that problem, just to let you know, it's coming, it's, I promise you it's coming. We are gonna be um, having, um, having a little laboratory library that we're gonna put together. That means like, it's just regular teachers, like filming their own laboratory by telephone really. And, and uh, with, with like, a, like a, a lab sheet, of course. And this is mainly to help teachers like you who, who don't have access to laboratories or probably need that need the student watch the lab a few times to understand what needs to be done even before they try it or even use as a pre-lab or use as a, as a lab sometimes to a certain extent, right? So they could see beginning to end you know, what does a lab look like and may answer questions or at least uh, kind of replicate because it's a skill. Knowing what to do is not doing what you need to do. And, and that's, yeah. that's two different things. So there will be like, a, there will be a call that'll be coming out like to L teachers if they wanna just do home labs with whatever they do is as long as they're filmed, even with their phone doesn't matter. And we will be collecting them and we will be kind of, putting them in a library accessible to everybody. So like that, it might help teachers like just for, for the lab component. That is- Well, the, actually, if I didn't know you were doing that, I, I filmed a few chemistry labs or chemistry and physics labs already. For oh, other wonderful, stuff. wonderful. Uh, kind of using the sofa thing, but it was a whole lab, so I don't want them to blow anything up. <laughs> not that they can, but no, I mean, the, the material not enough, but just solely if you're like, do it with me in a sense. Yes. But, and I think there is a chemistry simulations program. Oh, that's but great. It's just, but, you know, but it's not very user-friendly though. Okay, okay. But it's, which is such a shame because I, I much more prefer, especially in the individualized setting for people to do simulation. So I don't have to keep an eye on that closely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they still can get an idea. So if I, I know of one chemistry simulation where they can actually kind of simulate 
pouring stuff into the graduate cylinder to do experiment stuff, but it's not very user friendly. So if anybody else know anything else that are available that are free, because I know that's the other thing. Another thing that like, I know stuff that are not free, but then that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What tool is that, Jessica, that you're talking about? Um, I, I, I will find it. I will let you know because I have saved it in a bookmark somewhere. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and, and, and Emily, and, do you mean the free version or the, the, the non free version? Whichever version. I'll see what okay. I can find online, though. Yeah. But this is this is something maybe Emily could, could help us with, like, make a list of, of uh, all the needs, like, for, for that, and we could uh, combine it. And just to let you know, by the way, this, this project was also started off on the French side. So there is already labs that the French side already put together. And, and I know on the English side, and, and uh, Helen could speak to that in a, in, a, in a sec, if I may bug her to do so, there's teachers who are already starting to do that. And the idea behind it is not to go fancy and it's not to kind of uh, go high tech. It's really for student use. So <laughs> it's uh, the imperfection of a perfection, like you say, you know what I mean? So I don't know, Helen, uh, you wanna talk about uh, what you guys started at your center, but this is something, anyone can do and I'm welcoming everybody to do because I will be taking your videos and send them off to someone who will make them look pretty right so you don't have to worry about that and it's not for fate we're not looking for faces we just want a hands and whatever you're doing that's it that's all so um yeah so we noticed especially in our individualized uh for instance in our individualized that uh, we do have a lab but um we have uh, teacher-led courses in there every single block, which means, and our individualized is run at the same time as another group. So individualized students really just get sent down, sent to the back, and the teacher that's, that's there teaching just, you know, make sure that they don't break anything or anything like that. They're not, like, hands-on. Uh, and we noticed that there were just uh, a lot of students who were just completely blank on skills. Um, no one in my center, as far as I'm aware, is super big on simulations. Um, I, I personally, I, I don't love simulations. I don't find that they're. If you, I've, I'm, I'm of the opinion, if you want to learn how to play baseball, you got to get onto the field with a baseball and a bat. <laughs> but <laughs> so what we wanted instead was that we just spent a couple of days uh, just doing like really short videos. Uh, of just one of us performing the actions in like a somewhat exaggerated manner, right? Like, like the, when I think we did one for reading graduated cylinders where it's just like super exaggerated, somebody pouring something with like really pointing out, you know, that the graduated cylinder has to be on the table. You can't see what I'm doing. Like on the table, not held up, that when you're reading it, it ha you have to squat down to like go to not hold it. So we really just tried to make them as a like short and accessible and like really skill targeted instead of um and like technique specific as opposed to lab specific so like we did a video also uh, that hasn't been edited i gotta i gotta send them to michelin um of doing just a gas collection lab like how to just how to physically do the gas collection like that things that go upside down and stuff like that yeah, so so this is another another I know in, in one of the centers that I, I visited in La Chute and and uh, this is what I suggested to the teacher because she also have an individualized setting. And sometimes the students, like you said, Helen, like they don't know what to do, but some they do know what they do because they have previous, let's say they, they come from different countries and they're super like uh, they're, they're good. They know what they, they're doing. Right. So she kind of told the students, listen. Film yourself doing the lab. So it's even student generated. So that could be one of the way of checking. And like, if they know what they're doing, they could be in groups and their job is to be like, okay, one does the lab while the other one film it. And that gives some traces also for the teachers since she can't follow everybody, you know, to go back and review. And that could be used in 
she if she finds what they're doing is a good job could be something we could add to to a library and that's what she started doing because she had to also in the same setting she had to teach math english uh, english math and french and science in the same classroom so in her case she said she had a very strong student who happened to be a technician in their country doing the lab and teaching the other person who is watching it who happens to be a younger uh, younger student uh, to show her the techniques and it just happens to be a wonderful wonderful exchange and she was like oh I never thought of that I said perfect I go it, and it doesn't have to be fancy we could use our students we could use ourselves we could use our technician if we happen to have the luxury to have a technician but uh, other than that maybe this is a starting point just to to kind of and and like you said uh, Jessica starting from the beginning just naming these tools in a lab that is a challenge. And just to let you know, by the way, I, I when I was teaching physics, I did go to Abbott and I asked, um, I, I, I met with the, uh, the, um, the dean, not the dean, but the responsible of the physics department there. And I was asking them, like, you get all these adult students. How are they? <laughs> are they good? And that was one of their things, she said, knowing that they're coming from adult ed, we have a bridge program, almost like a bridge class saying how to behave in laboratory because they felt that their lab skills are super, super weak. And, you know, and I said, well, obviously because our laboratory, well, not, first of all, we were working with ancient tools and they're into sensors and a lot more advanced stuff. And, and also some of us don't have laboratories. So the, the lab component is, is a very kind of uh, neglected element. Uh, in some in well neglected element in general i mean not to, to specify anywhere you know so this is this is why something of concern especially a lot of our students we know they go to nursing they go to more hands-on kind of careers so that is something we should kind of elaborate on but it'll come we'll do we're doing the best we can with what we have so we're doing still a great job. It's just now knowing this, it's hard not to do anything about it, right? So um, I don't know if anybody, uh, Andre, if you heard anything from your teachers, uh, any complaints? Um, I don't wanna talk for them, for them but uh, one of the concern was not to have a lab. So what do we do when student needs to have, you know, to do a lab, their students, you know, writing an exam, their student, you know, at, the, at their desk working. So it was just the management of everything. So that was one of the concern. Yeah, so that's, yeah. So, so this, is, this is something we could like maybe investigate further in, in, in a way, like how can we help uh, laboratory practices to improve? for the teachers and for the students, like how, this, you know, for different settings, maybe. The, uh, the issue that we've been facing really is uh, with individualized setting is really the difficulty and depending on the backgrounds of people. You mentioned some of the backgrounds of math, so it's really, I can't set up a general rule, but we're trying to adjust to uh, each individual needs, which could be a really very wide, depending on their background. Some people, uh, so far right now, this year I see a big difference with uh, big uh, nursing involvement, but uh, some people, some students haven't gone to school for what, 10 years, 15 years. So back to not only the new program, but also some of their, uh, you know, studies in there, we have to activate. So even though they are in chemistry five, they may have the level of really going back to uh, even lower levels when it comes to that. So we try to adjust, but it's not the same challenge than, you know, teaching in the structure settings. And we have had that for, uh, for quite a bit. Now that's for the theory. The, the other difficulties with the time is adjust the number of labs because I don't have that luxury right now. Uh, so with the help of a lot of teachers and PD as well, it's, uh, I feel a bit more comfortable, but still missing time right now to, uh, to just, uh, and find out the right, you know, number of labs for each individual. I uh, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but I don't follow the uh, SOFAD uh, guides uh, for the uh, for the labs because I find it's very complex and uh, not really useful. The learning guides were just as much as we can, so it's not always easy. Unfortunately, in Glophone community, we don't have the choice. We have to use SOFAD. So. 
you know, I don't like so fast. I don't have the luxury to do, uh, you know, PowerPoints or I try to, uh, to, to do sometimes, depending on the number of students. But, uh, you know, they have to learn how to be individuals, work on their own and uh, work in their learning guide. It's not easy at all. So it takes a, some time somewhat. So, yeah. you know. So independence and uh, study habits, uh, all of that is, is an issue, I guess, across the board. Yeah. Comes and, to that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, comes to that. Um, Kathleen, based on uh, your exposure, do you have any uh, anything uh, that you notice, like patterns? Okay, so I come from a very um, high welfare area. And uh, I have been out of teaching. I don't. I was sick for two years. You knew that. So I only came back last October. So the numbers are very low. We're just getting our numbers up now. And with so with the the virus, it, it's very slow going. So um, what I have noticed is um, again, you're talking about low reading level. It's always going to be a problem. I'm teaching the math, and it's always always an issue. Attendance is an issue. We're in a rural area. It's getting kids here. Last year, they weren't allowed to take the buses, so our numbers went right, right down. So I'm trying to get the science in because if they don't have a science, of like a, just a general science offered in this area, they literally have to travel an hour in a bus to go all the way to Chateaugay. And I don't think that's fair for kids in the rural area. So I, I don't even have a lab set up. I, I have nothing. I'm trying to get things set up and Helen was kind enough last year to send me stuff, but I never had students sign up. So I haven't got any students yet, but I will. But I know what you're talking about. That individualized is a big issue. They're, they're needy. They want one-on-one. -on -one. That's what they want and that's what they get here. But um, and the big centers can offer classes, uh, taught classes. Uh, we can't offer that here. It's individualized and they have to be able to work on their own. And if they can't read, what do you do? That's a big issue. Yeah, but but this is this is this is across the board individualized or even even if you teach, uh, I think Helen, you teach a uh, magistral, right? Like a, a lecture base, right? And do you face these these issues too about reading and literacy? Uh, oh yeah, I, I also do individualize. I was just typing in the chat. I was wondering what um, online platforms people are using, because I know at our center we we did have we we're very fortunate. Um, our board set up a Moodle for us, uh, so an actual um, online learning platform, which actually really helped with some of the independence. Uh, issues with our students because um, built my courses like basically just sequentially. Um, so even if they're individualized, like they have my PowerPoint that I would use in a traditional course, and then they have like video links and stuff like that, and it's all done following the SOFAD book. But so they have like a synopsis of the SOFAD and then the links and then worksheets and like quizzes and stuff like that. So I don't know. Uh, how Sonia might be better to know what's involved with the back end section of that. Um, I mean, I know that if people have access to Moodle, I can literally just download my Moodle module and then essentially give it to people. But I can do that. <laughs> Helen, there is a way to sort of take your Moodle course and send it into the Moodle cloud that somebody else could access. There is a way to do it. Um, but I, what I found very beneficial, it was, a, it was a great experience for me. Sarah, you were involved in that. Um, Joanne, you helped us out with some of the tech there, but those curriculum maps, and there's a copy of, of the 4059 curriculum map in, in Michelin's document. Getting teachers together to build that curriculum map it's, it's, all, it's all designed according to the curriculum and teachers uploading their resources, whether it's a PowerPoint notes or their labs, that the labs that they're using, um, to have it all in one collaborative map like that, I think it's, it was probably one of the best projects uh, we worked on. And from there, people could then send those resources to their individual learning management system whenever they're using their own school boards. Yeah. So I don't know if there's an opportunity to get teachers together to do, to work on maps for each course code, and then uh, 
that's it. It's just to gather those resources. Oh no, definitely, Sonia. This is a great idea, and and these maps were so appreciated by so many people. By the way, just to let you know, I got so many great feedback on that, and it was requested for other classes. Just to let you know, so it's it's uh, it's just unfortunately is the amount of people on um, so many project, and unfortunately this year it seems I don't know what it is. It's not COVID, but we're not out of the wood yet, right? So it seems like. I don't know, hazy clouds everywhere, but uh, it's clearing up. It's going to come to an end. I hope all of this uh, this COVID mess uh, once we settle. Um, but I want to bring your attention also. Thank you, Richard, so much. On the French uh, on the French side, they also started the same idea. And if you notice, Richard had put in the chat um, like a, like also a collection of homemade videos. If you want, teacher, I know some centers had the funding to go fancy, you know, on on more advanced stuff. But the requirement was the idea was just to actually. Put, uh, put homemade videos on, on any lab uh, that they're administering to help students. So they, they, it's already started and the agreement was on the French sector that they'll, they, they're ahead of us, right? So they started, they had all these teachers starting to submit. On our English side, we're building also and we're gonna exchange. We're gonna obviously make a super sized library for everybody across the board. So that's the intention. Oh, look, uh, we have Karin, uh, Karin Jacques is here, so I'm going to introduce, uh, I'm going to let Karin introduce herself. <laughs> I'm Karin Jacques, I'm a new orthopedagogue at the Service Complimentaire. I work with Micheline, with uh, Julie, with, uh, I, there's two sons here. <laughs> so I can help you to help students, and uh, I'm going to make a workshop with the uh, with both of you and with Miss Flynn. Yeah, on differentiation. Just to let you know, we will be offering workshops on differentiation, on learning differentiation. Oh, mm -hmm. That's it with Karen. So we're going to use curriculum and differentiation, and, and uh, it will be uh, something to look forward, <laughs> just to let you know. Thank you, Karen. We're so happy you're here. Thank you. Um, so, uh, we could move on to the second question now. Now we're looking. We're looking at 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 the at teachers struggling with their student. But now, what do you find your students are really good at? Like something positive. What do you find? What specific subject do your students always do well on? I like to. Uh, I've come back to the idea that uh, Helen was talking about earlier. Whatever platform we have, and that's the principle that we had with, with Sonia uh, when we started the uh, in the network, we have a bunch of resources. And what I find uh, sometimes very helpful is I'll build uh, in my learning platform. I use Edmodo. Sorry, uh, you know, I never switch to Google or other platform, but the principle is the same. And by course, I organize a, a bunch of uh, folders that my students have access to as they are working there. It's very autonomous. I help them through these to choose these. I find sometimes they have a hard time to choose, but I add some learning videos. I add a lot of folders and I find that helps them to choose the topics that they specifically is, uh, is a challenge for them. So it's kind of completes the uh, learning the uh, learning guide because yes they have a hard time to learn and just follow the guides. I also um, beside the the maps we were talking about uh, Sonia we built we built some uh, we uh, enriched the uh, SOFAD map at one point of time, and we added some links in the SOFAD map we uh, road maps. We added some links to material that we were putting on that platform. So uh, one or the other helps really the student to follow the order and um, really pinch point to the resources that they, uh, they need to. At the end, it comes to as many teachers as we can to share the resources on your site or any other site. And then we tick from these and uh, build on our uh, working platform. The French sites do the same thing in there. And I find this sharing absolutely fantastic. 
I used, uh, I don't do uh, structured, but the resources, for example, that Helen, you shared on the PowerPoints, outstanding. I use some of these with my students, they love it. So when I can really uh, pinch one some students in there. Uh, so we have a lot of resources, just a matter of, you know, sharing them and each teacher can organize depending on the needs. So that's the way I... Yeah, I, I was going to say, I found the biggest issue at this point often wasn't like having resources or even finding resources. It was organizing in the matter, in a manner that like students could access. Because like if you just, I found that if you just had like, okay, here's a, um, like a file folder of resources um they don't know where to go and they don't know where to look and they get very very lost which i mean was one of the things i found that like you really had to be like okay no no start here here's everything about like this thing that you should start on and then give them like really give them a concrete and well described path through the material and and the fact that they won't go from like file folder to file folder like if it's not linear a lot of them struggle i don't know if other people have found that but i found I mean, to get back to question number two, I found that if you supplied that um, that structure, that very sort of more form structure, they did a lot, a lot better. I was going to say that. Well, to what you're saying, what you're saying, Helen, is, 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 is interesting because on the French sector, they have la feuille de route, which is what it is. It's almost like a checklist. You go there and you do this. Once this is done, check and the teacher checks. The second step, you get to do this. The, the student check, the teacher checks, you know, and they do it this way. So they're constantly back and forth in like that dance for individualized, but it's very thorough. Step one, step two, step three. And you're right. There is no, unfortunately, uh, lots of room for wiggling. It's very prescriptive and, and it's directive. And and that's the only way that they are able to get them to 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 work. Yeah. So maybe those those maps, uh, those curriculum maps could maybe that could be for the teacher and then have maybe a student's version, maybe. I don't know. What do you guys think? That with with a bit more. Yeah. Maybe something, yeah. Well, we could re we could revisit the format of these maps, maybe before we start uh, developing for other levels. Okay. Um, um, just getting back to my science tech course here, uh, they love building things. So the labs that I've been doing, I I received I uh, world the labs that um, Jessica, I think is her last name is Turgeon, I think she had created and shared beautifully last year with us. Um, and so, you know, they just, I give them the materials and just like she said, you know, you put out the materials, go ahead and build it. So as you know, we've done a, uh, we made a desk organizer. Uh, this is mine right here that they, they loved, you know, we, we, we just, they, but it cracked, it really helped them, um, uh, to, to practice their technical drawings because we did that before, you know, to plan out our, our object and, and dimensions and the whole thing. And it was really great. And then, uh, so it's simple and it's not like, you know, we used hot glue guns and uh, box cutters and, uh, you know, it wasn't fancy, but it, uh, they loved it. And we made a rubber band car and then we're going to build a catapult next week. So this stuff is, they're, they're loving it. Cause I just think they haven't done this kind of thing before. So it's very fun for them. Some kids would probably be jaded with this because they, they did it in elementary school or something, but these kids know. So uh, anyway, I say kids, but, and they're adults, but you know what I mean? So anyway, that's positive. <laughs> so it's fun. It's fun to teach it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing because by the way, just to let you know, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of research is saying uh, kinesthetic experimental learning is the best way of learning because they will retain what they feel when they connect an emotion to an experience, wrong or right, it is, it's going to be retained. It's the experience that you retain, right? We remember in our school, when we were younger, what went wrong and what went right and the how we felt, but we don't remember what we did half of the time, but just that experiment, experiential learning is, is such a privilege. It's such a, such a privilege. And, and you, Jessica, just showing up is a, just coming to school is a positive thing, I think, nowadays. 
the, the fact that they're still here despite a lot of different things, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, encouraging just students to show up. That personally, I think chapeau with the, the year that we had, uh, you know, it's a challenge across the board for teachers and for students. So just wanting to come back to class and start again and learn just that part with this, the everyday struggles, I think that's a huge positive thing. Um, okay, uh, if we go to question three, as a teacher, which topic are you least comfortable with? So and this is, we found this as a very interesting question, just because most of the times our teachers have to teach so many levels, so many topics, so many of everything, and we can't be perfect at everything, right? So which area would you, would like, not a review, but if we could get access to a specialist in that specific field, or even among us, some of us have a background that could be really wonderful to share. Uh, where would we start? <laughs> yeah, certainly uh, fractions are always a, a challenge. I don't know. Um, but uh, I am just coming up to my chapter on uh, motion transmission and motion transformation, and I'm going to have to teach different gears and all of these things that, whoa, it, it's, it's intimidating to me. Physics was never my strong suit. I love chemistry, biology, math, all good, but not physics. So it's good because it's forcing me to learn it before I teach them. And uh, that's, that's great because I can really help them. Um, but yeah, any help on that section of the, of the uh, 4060 would be very appreciated because I, I have some ideas and I've been, you know, I have a few resources, but um, that's intimidating to me. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you, Jessica, anything? Uh, I actually, I have not teach that particular one, but I found a, a $150 simple machine construction kits that might be potentially useful because then it, it's much better, like for me, literacy is always an issue. So I try not to rely on work as much as doing, but doing in a sense that's not going to cut anybody's fingers off because I can't deal with that. I, actually, I can deal with that because I teach first aid, but I don't want to deal with that. So I, I am posting a link, but I don't know because I have not done it for real. So I'm still at the planning stage, but when I hear you, I was like, oh, have you seen this? It's only $150. <laughs> and it might be useful. So I'm, I'm posting it as an Amazon. And, and, and uh, motion transfer and all that, the, the linkage. And I think, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that if my students see it, they can, how they just kind of have to associate the motion with words versus learning the words in a sense. Um, but I, I'm not done it for real, don't know if that works. That's super interesting, Jessica and, and, and Susan. And just to let you know, Andy, we're lucky to have Andy because Andy, when he joined the team, he is actually, he started off what course? You wanna talk about the course you started off in high school that you could kind of now drag into adult ed, which we'll, we'll be so appreciative for. <laughs> Sure. Um, about eight years ago, I was asked to start a woodworking program for the secondary one to secondary five group at the, at the school. And uh, we were happy to have uh, uh, a really nice old science lab. And so we built that up. Um, we had a couple of stationary machines that were already uh, in our possession, and we set those up as well. And we had a not a great budget, but we were able to get some fundraising happening and to get some other uh, portable and other stationary tools. And it was hugely successful in my view and in the view of uh, the kids who went there. And it became part of uh, a, uh, a profile uh, set up where kids came in every, every second day for an hour and a half. And yes, they got their hands on and it was tough. I mean, we had some kids who I had to show them how to swing a hammer and, and other kids wanted to be challenged a whole lot more. And um, so we had varied uh, um, skill levels and we, you know, I mentioned the budget uh, at the, the first couple of years, we were pretty skimpy on our tools and uh, uh, we had to make do with what we had. Um, 
much like possibly you in 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 your uh, in your milieu. So um, I, I'd have to say that you know coming back to your comment about the technical drawing, um, our first idea was to have kids draw the 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 product that they, they were and that they would end up having to build, and that didn't go so well. Um, we took the easy way out. I made the drawings for them. Um, you know, the kids didn't have, uh, they don't have that component in the curriculum anymore, or is somehow missing the, maybe it's patience with, with, uh, with pencil and paper and, and rulers. If it's, uh, um, just, uh, I, I couldn't describe, I couldn't describe there, there, there wasn't the, the, the effect that I wanted, uh, as far as drawing it was concerned. Um, there's a lot of time that has to be put into that aspect before, uh, before you come up with a, a nice drawing and a, and a good concept and then linking the skills to, to building the different parts that are drawn, a uh, uh, pretty big challenge. So I empathize with you when, when you talk about the, their lack of uh, being able to visualize and mention something that they, they didn't even know how to you know, use the Lego and so on. I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a critical element that's been slowly but surely dropping from our programs. A, for example, in math in secondary one, which I also taught for 10 years, kids um, had a really tough time joining the dots and, and uh, creating different side views and top and, and, and front views. Um, and, you know, they're supposed to be doing tessellations in grade six. I, I just wonder if, uh, if that part of the, the program is just being uh, run a little bit too quickly. Um, and maybe technology has a greater effect on on their uh, their willingness to to draw uh, anymore as much. So I'm not sure if I answered your question, uh, Micheline, uh, but I certainly um, I empathize with you there, and I'd be willing to work with you in in terms of uh, possibly bringing in simple projects like that desk organizer you made. Excellent. Uh, maybe working with different materials and um, simple toolkits. I think I can help you there and, and, and linking them with a nice project. And, and, and thank you. Yes, Andy, that's exactly what I wanted to get at is because we did have this conversation prior to Sapreco and because of his expertise in woodworking and, and putting that specific course together for the high school from one to five, he has an overview on the progression on how to take a students from one to five so, and of course, having that expertise in high school, right, they have different ideas, they have different things. And I, and I, and I brought him to speed in terms of what's the reality in adult ed, exactly like Andre said, uh, what do we do with the lab? We don't have labs. So if we have just like a little bit, uh, a small box of toolkit, and maybe take shoe boxes with like, in a, in a shoe box, have all the tools you need to perform a lab. Having that concept in mind, having like a set of like, 10 shoe boxes, I know I'm using shoe boxes, but the idea of having 10 shoe boxes, a variety of like uh, the 63 and 60 labs that our students could just grab and like understand that concept on their desk and not worry of, of them, uh, you know, hurting themselves or, you know, the supervision component, that would be great, you know, and this is something probably uh, uh, Andy and I will look into in terms of like first taking out the essentials of the, the curriculum and be targeting project to kind of add to what you have. Yes. Yeah, Emily. Yeah, I'm just thinking because I've been a part and maybe Andy, you have worked with them too, of a lot of different meetings with LEARN who do are really great about doing a lot of hands-on stuff with math and science. And I know that they've developed a bunch of things. So maybe we could chat with them too and see what of that we can bring into adult ed because uh, to, to bring more of that hands-on element. Yeah, building a library of, of all kind of, again, going back to the lab component, uh, component the hands-on component, I think it will only support the teachers and will turn that experiential learning live and hopefully we get them to, to see that science is for everyone and it's actually fun, you know? It's, uh, so yeah, it's an opportunity that we could grab them. Um, 
Yes, Sonia. I'm taking us back a step because Helen was okay. making a point about accessibility. Um, the RACI on their website talked about the RAISE model of sort of organizing or structuring a course in an online um, environment. So we tested it out at Riverside. If you want, I can share my screen and then I'll tell you the parts that Helen said we need to work on um, because it wasn't in this linear fashion. Do I have do I have the option to share the screen? Oh yeah, yeah, please do. Go ahead. So here's an example of 4059, okay? And the RAISE model, R stands for resources, A for activities. I removed the support because I had to reconfigure this for a summer school teacher who was um, teaching multiple, multiple subjects and she wasn't gonna put in discussion questions, but there would be an S that uh, would serve as a discussion forum for support. And then there's evaluation. So I loved uh, what Racy had shared with us. So we designed it according to the RAISE model. So here's a digestive system, for example. And whatever notes we had uh, on the topic, we, we uploaded them. Whatever activities we had on the topic, we either uploaded or linked them. I'll say one thing, we're not using Moodle to its full capacity right now because we're doing a lot of uploading as, a as opposed to digitizing the resources, but we're on our way here. <laughs> Um, and then evaluation would be whatever a quiz. And again, this quiz could have been built in a, in a uh, forms, um, but we're not there yet. We have to still digitize these things. Mm -hmm. So it was a way of structuring uh, or making the course content accessible to students. We thought this was a linear fashion, but then uh, Helen you know, made a, gave us some great feedback. She was saying that her students um, because everything was organized in folders, they thought that they had to do or read all of the resources before they can go do an activity, when, which wasn't the case. If a teacher has multiple resources and they say, you know, look at resource number one, then go do this activity and then go to resource number two, it wasn't evident in the way that we had designed things in folders. We used the folder so that it would be cleaner, like it would look visually seem cleaner to the student, but um, we're taking Helen's feedback into consideration. So we need to rework this a little bit. Mm -hmm. But basically that's, um, that's what when she was referring to accessibility earlier. This is, this is a, we're trying to make it accessible to the student through Moodle. This looks great. This looks really, really great. I don't know, Helen, if you have any more feedback for us here that we can address. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's um, they won't go back and forth. That's one thing I've, I've learned. They really, like the entire idea of going backwards in the Moodle or in any, in any setup is, is very, um, it's just not something they do. They don't flip back and forth, so. So. Would would teacher would be interested in looking into maybe uh, maybe assistive technology? Maybe we could look into maybe get somebody in assistive technology to talk about maybe ways to facilitate this to students. I don't know if teachers are interested into that or this is something we could look at. Maybe. I don't know. It's food for thought. So it's just because if, if there's interest in that, then we could get somebody who's more specialized, like we could invite Abby maybe to come in and like just to give us like a rundown or even like Sonia, maybe uh, Sonia, Helen and Abby could like just show like how, what was the background thinking and how easy it is to put it together if this is something, uh, you know, you're interested or even Emily, I don't know uh, if this is uh, something uh, as a group we, we we feel this is something would be interesting anyway food for thought is if this is something that that seems to be interesting please let your cp know or let us know and and we will we will get the the, the resources to help us uh, figure this one out if this is something uh, you know interesting to everybody um I know I I I I wanna 
ask about number four, but I'm a bit kind of concerned <laughs> because I kind of know a bit about number four. How do you support missing prior knowledge? This was a question that uh, we're going to be unfortunately seeing more of. You know, every level now our students start coming in with bigger holes. Biggest difficulty actually with the prior knowledge is like Kathleen was talking about, they all want one on one and they all want, um, especially the, this last semester, like through COVID, and I suspect for the next year. Um, I think everybody is is very tired. I think even the students are still very, very tired because they really, they want to just, you know, give me the recipe so I can mix the ingredients and get a cake at the end. And I prefer not to engage my brain. You know what I mean? Like that's the one on one. They really want to be spoon fed. So like a lot of the stuff that even that I used to do for uh, trying to support uh, missing prior knowledge is just... They're not interacting the same way right now with any of them, even in the courses or the material or anything. I know this may be off topic a little bit, but we have a horticulture course here. And uh, they asked me if I could come in and teach them basic math because they've been out of school for so long. So they gave me three days for each group. And all I did is a review. And now apparently they did this last year and it made a big difference in the course. So we may want to consider having some kind of a, before they even start the course, uh, don't give it, don't, it's not an option. You must take this, uh, this review course for a couple of days before you start, because I don't think it's fair for the teachers to like, as an individualized teacher, I do it, but there's a lot of people that they, they, they can't. A, a review, especially because of COVID. And it's just, it's just a fact of life. They are missing basic skills a lot of them have been they're not being taught what they need to get into what we're doing right now ask any teacher they didn't come. my sister's a teacher at high school she did not get to cover the whole curriculum there was no way no way and a lot of kids were doing online learning and coming and saying hey guess what i took a course at learn i'm now in your advanced 536 math class and they're failing miserably because they didn't get yeah that's all i have to say <laughs> Well, Kathleen, just to, to add to that, what you just said there, the government have actually published a list of prescriptive topics. So they kind of clean the curriculum to help the teacher to go through the year faster. So yes, unfortunately, they're coming in with bigger holes, but um, not thinking of the next level. So we have a couple of years of, of students that requires a lot, a lot of support, a lot, a lot of support, a lot. And, and, and having the, like you're saying, like a little a bit of a review course or even like a mandatory bridge of some sort of, of just like a refresher course of something to, to, if you have it before starting, it will facilitate everyone's life. But I know it's hard to sell unless it's included you know, unless it's included in the planning of a course. So this is, uh, and, and, and I don't know, Andy, you're just coming from, uh, from high school. Do you find uh, students have the same difficulties? Absolutely. We had the same situation happening there from, uh, for example, the secondary twos this year missed, um, they missed the geometry sector section of secondary one and when we were starting off the year you know learning equations and whatnot i had to uh throw in some some equations and uh some equations that were dealing with uh for example area of polygons and just to see how much of it they were missing and absolutely um big problem uh their practice at the end of the year also uh no, they didn't have their review at the end of that year and uh i feel like uh they they developed some really poor um study habits um their organization as well um you know supporting a gap you, you it's really a bad situation when you your your work ethic has suffered as well and uh what can we do about it i think we're still in the midst of figuring it out you know and, and it, it depends on the class as well. It depends on the kid. And 
I felt like, uh, like in our in our economy, we we've had a K-shaped recovery coming out of the out of COVID, uh, where the rich got richer and the poor got poorer. And I think that was uh, a similar situation happening with our kids and and their learning, in the sense that the the you know the smarter and, and the kids who were supported at home were able to go through and um, and catch what was missed or quickly make it up, and uh, and the ones who didn't are falling behind bigger gaps yeah. like we say this is a reality we have to look at and we have to find solutions i mean uh, and the solution i think uh, like like kathleen was mentioning if there's something like maybe a, a prerequisite review the typical review that we usually do now it's going to be teaching sessions it's not going to be review right but uh, lots of support and no expectations, I guess. You know, before, I guess, as a good practice, we expected students to be at a certain level. Now we just have to say, get rid of the expectation and let's start. What do we need for this course and start from there and, and go back as far as we need to individually, but at least to start somewhere a step by. Yeah, it should be. We had that conversation several times before, and it, it, it's not just something that you experience in math and sciences. Uh, you also actually experience the lack of reading skills or the gaps that are they're growing bigger and bigger in, in the reading skills. And uh, we have had that discussion that, that the gaps are going to be, there's, there's a necessity to fill the gaps, but not topic per topic or subject specifically, but rather maybe a little bit across the board. So at some point, we're going to have to look at it also from, take a step back and look at it from a whole a holistic standpoint, because it's definitely, those gaps are not easy to resolve and they're not easy to bridge at any level and in any topic, any specific subject. I guess reading, uh, reading works across, right? Not just in English, not English, only in French, it works in science and math too. So absolutely tricks yeah that we have to do it together and i guess you realize it even more at the at the adult level because they have been out of school for some of them anyways have been out of school for a while they're interested in doing something different with their life but then their reading skills may not be up to par so that becomes an issue as well uh, so um I, I did something during the the pandemic that turned out to be very i finished because uh, i basically record myself going through my own material and then post it on YouTube. <laughs> uh, it's unlisted, but multiple students have said that whenever they didn't understand the concept, we're not very sure, they find it very reassuring to be able to go back to the video again, 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 again. And I find it very useful that I literally have duplicated myself four times <laughs> into like in, in, in different, different playlists of videos. And that's the only way I survived so far. <laughs> In, in a hybrid sense, because now I'm still individualized, so I have very individualized. The reason I still have hair is because I have my videos, and I'm continue to make more ish, <laughs> hopefully. But uh, if anybody feel like they might uh, may be able to make use of my video, because like I said, for my math, I go from the very very beginning to the very very end, but rather rapidly, just so I cover a range and if the student need more practice, I give them more practice on the side because I'm individualized, I will not be able to do that. But I'm also open to share the playlist if you might find it useful. Uh, thank you so much, Jessica. Maybe if you don't mind, then you could send it to me and I'll put it on the website and I'll make it accessible to whoever needs it. So. And, and that could be an invitation to other teachers too. Sometimes if you're addressing the same topic, you know, maybe somebody, if Susan does the same kind of lecture and maybe your student hears Susan's lecture and might say, oh, complimentary to yours, you know, that would be nice to have maybe, you know, uh, yeah, that's, that's actually a brilliant idea. Thank you, Jessica. The disclaimer, I may have swear in one or two video. <laughs> Have, just so you know, and I make fun of it at the beginning, but just so people know, because eventually I go in, I want to blow nuts. <laughs> well, you're lucky our students are adults. We're good. <laughs> exactly. If I still, since I'm sharing, I want people to know that before. Right. 
one of the benefits of being an adult dead. We don't need to be like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost almost expected, which not right, but anyways. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Micheline, if I could just add one thing. Um, I really appreciate what you said, Jessica, about the videos. It's a great idea. Because um, I think just sometimes hearing from someone else that clarifies things. Um, and one technique that perhaps, I don't know, could be developed or whatever, supported, but it's just, I'm my students, you know, like, they, they really only learn when they're in the classroom because they're, they've got all kinds of learning disabilities and they've all kinds of social issues. And just the fact they get here is amazing. But if I give them anything online to do at night, any homework, anything, forget it. So it's all in the classroom. So what I've been doing is every week I give them a quiz, an easy quiz that I know most of them are going to do well on. And I just, I find on those topics, like, you know, even just simple graphing, that's another one that I found lacking in like no idea. And I know it's probably combined with some learning disabilities. They just can't see the X and the Y. They have no idea what I'm talking about. So it takes us well. Anyway, but giving these quizzes means that they, like today, I just every Wednesday, it come in, give them this thing. Well, they're all engaged. They all care because I'm going to take it in. It's not worth anything, but because I'm collecting it and it's going to get corrected, they're all into it. And they're, and they're actually started helping each other, which I don't care. I, this is fantastic, right? Because that's, and the, like the stronger ones are going and helping some of the weaker ones just automatically. And it, it's like the class comes to life on quiz day. Um, the other days they, you know, obviously I have to do the teaching, I have to practice, da, da, da. But there are some of them are just tuned out, you know, just so anyway, that's something. So if we could have more easy quizzes on these topics, that could be helpful. Oh, as I said, yeah. Well, Susan, you brought a super, super point because honestly, to go over your point, we know all evaluation drives teaching, right? In a way, you know, and it's really real for the students. The minute you say, even it doesn't count, like you say. I'm going to pick it up. Oh my God. It's suddenly I have a purpose for doing it. Right. So yeah, maybe, well, maybe this is a brilliant idea of building a library of quizzes on topics and make it available. And this is where it could be used as an exit card, could be used as a formative assessment, could be used as so much and it's shared. And you know what, sometimes on the spot, like let's say you have a class tomorrow and you're teaching something that took longer and so you just need a different idea to be inspired by let's say Jessica's idea or Helen's idea of testing that concept in a different way and it might just you know and also to practice different styles of questions because you're writing always your quizzes so they get used to it so having let's say Jessica write it or Helen write it or even Andre writing it, it it's just another way of reading a question and it's very beneficial thank you so much that's a brilliant brilliant idea I appreciate that. Thank you. It will be something on our to-do list for sure. And, and if you have already quizzes or ideas that you have, please uh, share share the wealth. And I'll, I'll, I'll add it up on the, uh, on the age uh, resources also section under pretest. And it'll be key locked. So you guys can still use it as a quiz. It'll be, but I'll make a section is like quiz, exit card, assessment, like formative assessment. So we know that this is for a daily use for the teachers. That's, that's, that's brilliant. And by the way, I know one of my colleagues on the youth sector, uh, they have also done the same thing for sciences. They'll put like a question, like a general question, like about I don't know, environmental change or why the moon is full today or something like that. Look, just a general and they'll answer it only on Friday, you know, so they'll give them the time like, you know, to, to you know, pop curi for curiosity. So stuff like that sometimes just having something for the fast ones to kind of tinker on, you know, that might be a, that might be something we can definitely develop. Yeah, Emily. Yeah, I was going to say one of the things, uh, another teacher that I was talking about, not for, she doesn't teach math or science, she teaches French, but one of the things during the pandemic that she thought was really cool that came out of it was in her, uh, she had like a WhatsApp chat group going on for her students. Um, and one of the things that happened was that the students would troubleshoot each other. So when, and they would share course related resources that they'd found, they were like, oh, we were talking about X in class. 
I found another video about it that like you guys might find interesting. And that could be interesting for math and science. Like if a student is struggling with a certain concept um, and they find something on the internet that works for them that helped clarify, then maybe they, if they had like a spot to share it with everybody else, that could be cool. Yeah. And, 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 and also Julie had uh, recommended, uh, she came across uh, something that might be useful is the IXL site. I don't know if everybody's familiar with it, the IXL. It's, um, Julie, if you want, put it in the chat if you want. I to. will definitely do that. And I, I really stumbled upon it uh, by, not by mistake, but as I was browsing for possible resources for uh, grammar for grammar exercises and free online sources so I could put on the website and then I saw whoop, this little tab for math so I will put the um, I'll put the website in the chat box for you to browse it's really interesting and they have they are not uh, Quebec based but they do have aligned with the Quebec curriculum so in math and in languages so that might be useful. Well, it's funny. It's a funny anecdote on that one, the IXL. They're actually the, the creator of the site. They're from Quebec, but they're stationed in California because they were subcontracted to do the American curriculum, but they still did the Quebec curriculum. Uh, but, uh, but they're actually, they're from here, just to let you know. They just, they're stations from, Cal they're stationed in California. And why do I know that? 10 or 12 years ago, I actually met we went in a, a oh. and they were there and I met one of the ladies. So yeah, it's well, super it does explain then. This is the ELA uh, link, but you can go back and check it out. Super. You know, it's, it's free, like you don't have to pay, but you have to sign up, make an account or something. Is that right? I used to use it a long time ago. It, is, it, it might is, be. Yeah, it is free, but I think you're allowed only 10 minutes a day of free, but they, they put a yeah. cap on it. They put a cap on it because before it was unlimited. But because yeah. of the cap and they wanted people to register. But I personally think it's perfect. If you just tell your student, just go 10 minutes a day, practice this, that's plenty. That's true. And if they get okay. to do 10 minutes, personally, chapeau, because uh, we may not even get those 10 minutes between me and you. But uh, yes, if we take a look at question number five, it's like if you have any reference, if you have any model, like uh, um, any any sort of, textbook, uh, any sort of resources you go to that you think might help, you know, uh, to share with your colleagues, please. I know, I know on, on the French side, they use different, like, observe, uh, they, they have other books that uh, need to, we can build a library in French and English, and at least as a references, we could, uh, we could uh, kind of consult if need to. And I know we have the internet, which is a wonderful tool. <laughs> yes, Mini? <laughs> that's actually something I've been thinking about um, and I'm not sure if anybody here has heard of CK12 they have a lot of excellent science resources Sony's nodding Sarah's nodding awesome they have a lot of excellent um, like simulations and stuff but they also have something that I think is pretty cool which is they have these flex books which are interactive textbooks um, and what's great about them is that they have them pre-created, but you can kind of like modify them for your own use. So you can take the sections that pertain to the curriculum and you can create your like your own textbook. And I know like, and we've been talking a lot about literacy and one of the things that students struggle with is, you know, when they're on their own reading a text, it can be really rough. Um, so I created a proof of concept for one of the biology courses, just to kind of like see this own uh, textbook uh, taken from the stuff that they already have on CK12. I'll put it in the notes. You can check it out. Um, that was one possible way I could think of, of like an interactive textbook where students can click on the terminology. The videos are built in, the um, simulations are built in so they can kind of see the, the more abstract concepts, you know, rather than when they're reading, the textbook doesn't react to, to them. Very interesting. Uh, at least it's a resource. Our students need resources. So this is anything that could kind of support the students to make them more independent learner. Please send it our way, right? So uh, that being said, um, um, I don't know if you have anything else to add on 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 term of needs, on 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 term of concerns, on something you would like us to look into more specifically. 
uh, all I could tell you just as a scoop a little bit, um, I know the newer exams like um, that we, we kind of heard from the back channel, we gonna be, they're gonna be moving from, um, especially the task to, towards more explain and justify kind of uh, uh, style of evaluation. So literacy becomes even more pronounced. So uh, we're, we're stepping away from like kind of spilling the beans, like just memorize and re replicate to more is like, tell us on the process of thinking about where, how did you get to that conclusion? So there is a lot of articulation and a lot of, you know, science communication that we're, we're trying to develop. So literacy is not going away. away. And we, we, we have to kind of figure out ways to help our students. So this is something uh, that should be practiced across. But anyways, we know that. Uh, so just to let you know that the, the, the newer versions of exam, they'll be more towards that based on what I heard. <laughs> A little birdie told me, <laughs> like we say. Um, that being that, um, that brings me to uh, another point that I thought would be really, really interesting to bring today to the après cours and, and ask you what you guys think. Um, a lot of the, our students, they're not aware of what they're being evaluated on. And that is a big issue, right? Well, they, they just follow us blindly and hoping for the best, right? And we, of course, do our best to get them where they need to get. But if you if you if you personally take a class in university and the teacher doesn't tell you what he's going to evaluate you on, you would not want to take the class because the first thing is like, how am I? What am I going to get my grade on, or what am I being evaluated on? And this is something that, as a practice, should be given the, to the students from day one, right? And that being said, um, uh, uh, I had presented this on IKEA Gel last year, and um, it was actually really successful. Some of on the French sector, what they did, they took it and translated it, and they put it in their workbook as a first page. So I said, you know, this is ironic. I developed for the English sector, and then the French sector took it, which I'm happy they they, they benefited from it. But um, uh, I would like to share this with you. I'm going to share my screen, and and uh, what I did is I turned it into a working document. Uh, hold on. And it's accessible to everybody. Okay. Let's see, just uh, uh, if it's in the agenda, it's the last item. I had provided three samples at, at one of the workshops, and one of the sample was already filled up, and another one with just guiding question, and a third one empty. And the most popular one seemed to be the empty one. Because what the what the, some feedbacks I got on this is, this is they want this is an exercise they wanted to do it with the student, with the sample problem and a solution and go over it, and say okay when we're evaluating you on something we're evaluating on these criteria and this is what they are but now this is all jargon that doesn't mean nothing to you but now let's take these words and put it in your own words. And the guiding question is just almost like making a checklist in the words of the students. So every time they go through a problem, they make sure they have these components in their answers. And if you go back and review the rubric part, you'll notice that in the rubric parts, this is what they're evaluated on. They're not evaluated on the steps, they're evaluated on the idea. <laughs> And if they're capable on these competencies. And these competencies, of course, if they're not practiced from day one, right? And they're not familiar with, it's almost like having the perfect recipe. There's an introduction, there's a, there's a middle, there's a conclusion, what's in the introduction, what's in the middle, what's in the conclusion, the components are there. So that may help in terms of maximizing the chances of having a complete answer on, on, a, on an exam, right? And we know evaluation drive teaching, even though we would like to always be in a idealistic world and say we teach everything. But I thought as, as an exercise, we may just look at this and, and maybe even take it and come back to that uh, maybe next time and, and look at it and say, what would I ask my student here to make sure that specific criteria is not missed? So 
I'm inviting you. I know due to time and I'll respect time. Uh, due to time, I'll, 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 I'll resume here, but I'm inviting you to take this document and tinker with it, you know, with a student or even by yourself and see what kind of, what kind of question can I ask? I will add to that document, my other documents with the typical questions and see if these are questions you would actually use or not, or if you make, if you could change these questions into something that you will find more relevant to your students, knowingly your student, knowing your student. So I just thought this could be a very interesting uh, document to share with you and, and to see uh, maybe it might be beneficial. You can even reformat it the way you like. And I know some, some people may have it. We work completely in a, in a student-friendly manner, uh, like a checklist, uh, fait de route, but uh, whatever it is, like every time they do a complex task or a problem, do I have these components there? And, and it's almost like always a reminder. And the more you do of the same, by the end of the day, you, 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 it becomes second nature to you. So when you come to correct, you know very well the student knows First step, they have to almost always identify these things. Second step, whatever the problem is, it doesn't matter, but these are the component of a complete answer. So I thought of sharing it with you guys. And, um, and I don't know if you find this helpful or not. We, I don't wanna keep you longer than we have to. It's just an introduction of the year. We wanted to start, we wanna get people together, pick up the concerns and uh, make more targeted après cours on, on needs versus on just general subjects. But uh, now I have a, like, we have a bit of a feel on, on your needs. And uh, from, from there, we'll try to plan our next après cours on people's needs with probably inviting experts to come and give us a hand if need to, or, or you know, target more. You're the expert of your fields. So at the end of the day, we're here only in service to help you out. And I wish you a beautiful evening. Please rest. Enjoy this crappy weather, but it's still beautiful outside. <laughs> still not snowing. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> Thanks, Michelin. And I'm going to make sure the teachers all get access to the notes as well. So maybe that way more interest could be generated because it, as you have acknowledged, it's amazing to see teachers here at the end of the day. And it's a challenge eh, to get people at this time of year and this time of the world, basically. But I know that they're, they would be really interested. So I'm going to take some key points out and bring it forward to them, too, and keep the awareness going. Thank you so much, Thanks. Gail. Thank you.